guest for today today's session is an extremely interesting person and i'll read out some facts about him he's a, a second dan black belt in taekwondo he's an international referee as well as an active practitioner of kalari payatu i hope i pronounced it rightly is the world's oldest martial arts he's also an avid photographer who captures world stories in 458 pixels per inch and by the way he's also the global futurex media leader for the multi billion dollar prestige beauty brand sk2 introducing gaurav virkar or gv as he's fondly known hi partha thanks very much i don't know where you picked that introduction from is it on my linkedin then i need to go and delete it <laughs> i can't tell you that secret i have picked it up from someone we'll go let's let's get right into it so gv i was trying to think of a topic that would be interesting for our viewers and also something that you are passionate about So and I know you're extremely passionate about building luxury brands through storytelling. So today let's talk about the role of storytelling in luxury brand marketing. Works for you? Awesome. Perfect. So let's just start the conversation with my first question. Purpose is something that is clearly very important to SK2, right? And we saw it during the versus and the centerline campaigns during the Olympics last year. So what has been the process to ensure that authenticity runs through your messaging in all your campaigns you know that that's a that's a great question uh, uh, partha i think before i talk about uh, our purpose driven marketing and what purpose we stand for a very 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 brief uh, background which drove to this uh, purpose right uh, so sk2's discovery story is pretty fascinating uh, when a bunch of scientists were uh, roaming around in japan in sakki brewery they found that uh they were really old workers 80 90 year old working and their faces were all uh, wrinkled uh but but the uh, rice bowls in which they were working uh, when they observed their hands they were like 20 25 year old uh, uh hands right so so not a single wrinkle there and they tried to figure out what's the reason behind that and they figured out that that what was the origin of uh, sk2 which is the specific dna from that yeast which help preserve the the skin in its most basic crystal clear form right uh, and that discovery is now 40 plus year old i think one thing that has not changed for sk2 uh, is in 40 years we have not changed our uh, the products dna or products basic formula right uh, so we don't launch any uh, changes now with improved formula with more vitamin d blah 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 all of that kind of uh, uh, marketing is is not there and sk2 being the such a heritage brand it always needed to stand for something higher and something which is time tested and and uh, yet contemporary right so it, it's it's making you meet both the worlds and that's where the uh, purpose of uh, change destiny was born and some of the campaigns that you are uh, talked about which is the latest olympics uh, central in uh, campaign etc uh, i think they play a, a very pivotal role in sk2's uh, storytelling and the purpose we stand for so the purpose of sk2 is essentially about empowering women to to let them know about the issue and let them decide uh, what they should do whether they should do uh, anything about it very so that <laughs> basically is is how sk2's uh, purpose driven marketing goes and and we stand for that entire change destiny identity and we keep coming back uh with the campaigns uh, which which talk about uh, that particular and it, it is the central part and and it is different i mean the one year that i have spent on sk2 as the global director i realized it is it is a very different way of marketing and very few brands do that today you know this whole purpose driven marketing uh, brand building is not something which many brands do uh so it's a rare brand and obviously brand is doing well because of the heritage that it had with over the years yeah it's true i think i see many brands i think uh, i don't know uh, we 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 in the media world we typically try to divide and uh, paint picture into hey this is brand building this is performance marketing uh, and and a lot of people uh, and brands are currently going after the performance marketing especially after the covid times and the marketing roi it has come under scanner I think one thing that we have realized is the brand building and performance marketing are actually two sides of the same coin and in the long run what has always 
helped uh, uh, SK2 grow uh, from a Japan brand to an international brand across 10 plus countries now uh, is basically the ensuring that we are not taking our bar for uh, our off the ball of brand building. Uh, and that actually helps us improve our performance marketing ROI exponentially well. So, so which leads to my next question. So, how is SK two's how is SK two using the art of storytelling to connect with the luxury consumers? And I know consumers is at the heart of everything that you do. So, how does SK two use this art of storytelling to connect with with luxury consumers? Yeah, no, I think that's that's an interesting one. And you have been part of the journey along with uh, Media Comba where it started. Uh, and, and you guys are the uh, co-creators of this entire journey, which has now become quite iconic, just like the brand. But uh, when you talk about um, uh, storytelling, right, uh, it goes back to the first uh, point that we were talking about, uh, what really is the purpose and if the purpose is about empowerment. And I often quote this. Uh, so, so at my home, the parenting style for me versus my wife is, is very different. Uh, Kind of a taskmaster. So when I'm I'm talking with my kids, it's it's very clearly do this, just don't do this kind of. It's it's very very prescriptive, right? Uh, versus my wife, uh, who's HR director, she typically has this descriptive style of uh, telling them what the issue is, telling them what the situation is, and letting them decide. Now, obviously, she doesn't uh, uh, let them decide, and she gives them two options to choose from. Both are in her favor, but. Keeping that part aside, it, it, it still it still is about uh, being descriptive and believe, be, believing that you will get long term results. Uh, and in a way, in a way, I've seen that that has worked out uh, because I while while my my directive uh, style page uh, short term results and immediate ones, uh, but in the long run, uh, I think I think her style is right is what I'm believing in, or I'm I'm meant to believe. SK2 storytelling is, in a way, uh, something similar. So what SK2 is is doing is, uh, for now over 40 years, uh, when we have taken stand about various uh, issues concerning the, the women uh, across different parts of the world, uh, SK2 is a, a unique mix of global and local. Uh, and we, we 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 do the storytelling uh, mixing both. So there could be a local insight coming out of one market, which we will take to the global stage. Or at times there will be some of the global orchestration, which will happen in a very very focused uh, 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 one or two markets only. And we discovered a lot of interesting things uh, as part of this global plus local uh, storytelling journey uh, behind bringing our purpose to life. So the traditional wisdom, for example, was uh, that especially in linguistic markets like Japan uh, or Korea, only the local celebrities uh, will work best. So they obviously, yes, they, they do work best. Uh, but just as a, as a test case, when we actually uh, brought in some of the content from the USA celebrities, that actually worked much better in terms of the uh, performance both on business as well as content and we were doing a deep dive and chit chatting with the uh, Japanese consumers and what we found was uh, their reaction was uh, uh, SK2 is a Japanese heritage brand so if a Japanese KOL or Japanese celebrity is talking about it I mean that's a good thing but obviously they will talk about it that's their culture right but uh, we feel immensely proud when 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 somebody else from USA or from Malaysia uh, is talking about the heritage, uh, heritage of, of the brand uh, that we have, right? And I think that is the essence of uh, SK2 storytelling, which is how do we not divide between global versus local or brand building versus performance marketing, but take one end of the thread and scale it uh, out to the other end of the spectrum. And that has always worked wonders for us. Um, so, Jivi, I I'm aware that, you know, you use a lot of we use a lot of platforms and channels for storytelling. So, you know, what are the channels that you see as becoming more important to SK2 as the years go by and in the future? And how how are they now working well together? Got it. Yeah. So, I think uh, the obvious answer obviously will be uh, emerging platforms like uh, TikTok or uh, Darwin in uh, uh, China. And they hold good, right? Uh, and yet, I think before I talk about them, uh, I want to emphasize on the fact that uh, SK2 storytelling is about long-form stories 
or or re not not really going after by this by now one plus one twenty percent off. Uh, so so we when we are painting the issues when we are painting the uh, stories, they really come with uh, long form story advertising. On an average, uh, our, our videos will be at least sixty second and uh, onward. Whereas the world is moving more towards the short form content in the form of TikToks, YouTube is penalizing the uh, long form content and so on and so forth, right? So it's a, it's a dichotomy uh, we, uh, we are living. So long form storytelling, organic stories, uh, platforms, they still continue to be the crux uh, for uh, SK2. But having said that, I think the, the real interesting challenge that uh, we are working on currently is how do we break these long form stories uh, into manageable uh, chunks? And that is where TikTok Darwin comes to play because these are the new emerging platforms which have completely changed the way we do advertising led marketing, right? Uh, so when, when people moved from TV to YouTube, YouTube to Facebook, et cetera, yes, there were changes, there was evolution. Uh, but but especially with the advent of uh, TikTok, what we are seeing is that the the role and importance of the organic content and organically being embedded on the platforms is unprecedented. So so the paid advertising actually takes a backseat and it just creates the initial awareness. But uh, what is the best way, uh, which is based in the TikTok algorithm to scale the content organically uh, and who are the right influencers to work with, uh, what should be the right mix of them, how do we groom them in order to ensure that uh, in the entire TikTok world, the uh, SK2 prestige equity is not diluted and yet we are TikToky. Uh, I think that's an interesting uh, uh, inflection that we are undergoing. So I'll, I'll say Darwin da TikTok and any other short form uh, platform like Billy Billy, et cetera, uh, that's the new frontier and that's a very different ball game versus what we had done before. The other thing, Giri, and this, is the, this leads to my fourth question really, is there's a lot of emphasis on technology in marketing today and you know, a lot of brands are embracing a lot of new methods of marketing and you know, AI, et cetera. So how is SK2 using technology such as AI, for example, to engage with uh, consumers? I mean, are we using it at all? And do we believe in it or uh, we don't use it at all? <laughs> It'll be nice to say that uh, we don't use it. I'll, I'll be interested in talking to a person who doesn't believe that technology is not uh, an enabler. Uh, we do definitely believe in uh, technology enabled or technology led marketing. Uh, the heart of storytelling, the heart of brand building is still, the, still very much human, still very much creativity led. But the way technology will bring that to life is very different, uh, right? And especially the audiences which we are going after, which is uh, Gen Zs and millennials, uh, if they are surrounded by technology day in, day out, uh, that is where SK2 is going to come to life uh, anyways, right? Now, to answer your question in terms of how do we leverage technology, uh, uh, and I'll cite this example, uh, especially uh, back in my agency days, I think, uh, what, what inspired me from the SK2 leadership team was every year there will be at least two, three uh, uh, business trips that we will do, which will be focused on meeting up with the new startups, meeting up with the new tech players, uh, meeting up with even, even the beta players of the new technologies and just trying to see uh, what can co-create. And there were two specific areas in which... Uh, we, we tried always to convert uh, all these new techs into the SK2 marketing world. One was our uh, future experiences division, which was more about how the future of retail is going to uh, shape up with the technology-enabled platforms, counters, technology-assisted uh, counseling, skin test, etc. And then the second one is the marketing world and the media world, uh, right? Um, I, I remember during the... Uh, the, the one of the business questions that we have floated to uh, Mediacom about how do we really use technology to identify the, if, if there is so many fake followers of the KOLs or if there's so much duplication, same followers across multiple uh, uh, KOLs. Uh, that time, uh, Mediacom had reached out to to Hyper, which is a, which was a tech startup, 
and work with them in order to create, I think, first of its kind and unduplicated reach curve based tool uh, for SK2, which helped us uh, make the, the KOL investment decisions much more sharply, right? Uh, so I do believe that technology plays a, a key key role and, and uh, it, it did not be completely on category. The, the example that I gave was, was simply about using the facial recognition uh, software to look at the social profile photos and identifying who are the same followers across uh, multiple uh, KOLs. Right now, that has nothing to do with the skincare technology per se, but finding that connection which, which uh, exists, but it's not very obvious. I think that is where uh, different technologies are uh, uh, meeting up with these diverse uh, tech players always plays a role. So, so just a counter question to that. So will, will SK2 be the lead or will, will be the first to adopt a new technology or will SK2 as a brand wait and see you know, what others are doing and then learn from that experience and then get into this? <laughs> Uh, I'll say it's 80-20. 80 80% 20. Uh, 80 of the time, uh, we would like to take the lead and uh, it's it's not because you want to uh, break the new frontiers and obviously all of that is there. But especially uh, from the, the brand perspective, we are trying to play in a category which is in itself uh, not a developed category in many parts of the market. So, so SK2... Uh, facial treatment essence essence as a category as part of the skin regimen is not evolved so from the marketing perspective back in the days we were always uh, uh, about it was always about how do we become the first ones in order to break new territories new audiences new relationships new points of contact with the consumers and now now i think that culture was always the dna of uh, sk2 or and that definitely started showing up in, in even the, how we execute things. So, and another constant that uh, SK2 always lives with is uh, unlike many other brands who have the privilege of launching new innovations, new product line extensions, new packaging, new improved formula uh, every year or if, multiple times every year. Uh, like I said, SK2 does not have that privilege. So that means the only thing that we truly can change is, is about how do we do our purpose-based marketing and media differently versus uh, before without changing the product. Product is the same. <clears throat> uh, and, and, and I think that is why we are always reaching out to the industry publisher agencies to find the new tech and that's 80%. I think the other 20% is uh, where we there are times when actually we, we take a backseat, uh, let's say in media world, uh, when we will do a small A-B kind of a test, but for the truly uh, scaling up something meaningful investment, there are times when there is, there is uh, the advantage of being the second player rather than the first player. Uh, and you can learn from somebody else's mistakes. So, true, true. Since we talked about technology and and the new consumers, and like you said, SK two is a is a mature brand. It's, it's a forty year old brand. Uh, uh, it's got a rich heritage. But given that the technology is changing and there are new consumers, there's a Y generation. Where do you think SK 2s future growth will come from? So first of all, I mean, uh, SK2 is not a mature brand. It is a young brand. Uh, in a, so so we will not apply the uh, forty-year-old brand and anthropomorphize it, uh, saying it, it's from the human evolution standpoint. Oh, forty years old means it's a, it's a mature brand. Uh, absolutely, you know, I think especially with the changing times and um, it, it, it's true that it is a time-tested formula. It's a time-tested brand which has stood. Uh, across all these uh, uh, 40 years. But the interestingly, the average age of the uh, SK2 user is becoming younger and younger every year. Uh, and, and that is both uh, by design. We are trying to ensure uh, that we are reaching out and connecting with more and more younger audiences um, because uh, the the going back to the purpose-driven marketing that we talked at the beginning, right? The, the torch bearers of these uh, purposes is the Gen Z, is the uh, millennial uh, generation. 
and they are the ones who will go and make a difference who will take a stand for the social issues that we talk about or for the country specific uh, uh, issues that we talk about and that's the very reason that we like to connect to the younger audiences a lot more uh, because all the insights that we get uh, from them uh, uh, as well as the way they react and they they can relate with our campaigns our ideologies our uh, uh, purpose i think that gives us the energy uh, for organization as a whole uh, to make a meaningful difference so to answer your question in short uh, a escrito is not a mature brand it's a very very young, very young brand very uh, cheap brand uh, and second uh, the audience is that we are going after and, and trying to really connect with uh, because that's where we draw our energy from is the younger audience and it's not necessarily the escrito buyer or shopper uh, per se it could be even even younger person uh, than that awesome ji i think that that brings me to the end of the first segment of this in conversation with so thanks mm-hmm. thanks for the wonderful insights on storytelling in in the marketing world and i i can see storytelling is deeply involved in you ingrained in you as well but i love the way you answer the questions nicely explained through the art of storytelling the jigit this brings me to the next segment of uh, of this uh, in conversation with which is actually more a quick fire round first question is uh, what is your favorite line from a song or a poem or a book or a movie and why okay sure uh, so there is this uh, poem by jack london uh, that's very dear to my heart its opening line is something which is very uh, uh, close to me it it it, it goes by uh, i will rather be ashes than be dust and then i think there is a poem but but essentially i think it 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 truly embodies the essence of everything that we talked uh, about and uh, depending on where i am working uh, my favorite line uh, keeps changing but in sk2 tenure of 5 years i think uh, this this particular line uh, embodies the spirit of sk2 uh, because because the idea is we need to do something rather than just sit at the aisle and and observe the world and life uh, taking place so it's perfectly okay if you fail if you fall if you bleed as long as you are doing something you are living your life by the that that stay with me nice nice okay the second one what lesson has been the hardest to learn in life whether it's your personal life or work life you know what is the lesson that been that has been the hardest to learn for you i can i can talk about two lessons and so i had that conversation yesterday with my uh, son he was writing the uh, school assignment and he asked for two lessons i just made that up on the spot but first lesson was is about really unlearning uh, i think learning comes easy uh, studying comes easy uh, reading data comes easy but once we have found a fascinating inside of fascinating learning uh letting go of that learning and uh, believing in something dramatically opposite i think that 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 something i'll i'll, I'll say it's n- not natural to me uh it's not natural to the environment in which uh, we live which is about test learn and then scale which has been the traditional way uh but that's the way to go and second one is letting things hang uh so most times i'm a task master like i said uh So I don't like to let things hang, but there are there is a merit at times. I have learned uh, hard way at times uh, in in letting things hang and letting them take its own shape and uh, course. Perfect, perfect. Give me one minute. So this is the third question. Where in the world, whether it's real or fiction, would you like to live, and why? This is place uh, of uh, Sydney. Uh, called blue mountains uh yep. been there now at least six times and every time i go there uh something there connects with me very very deeply you you come to the end of the town and there is a million years old rainforest intact till the horizon uh, i love to live there nice nice hope you get the option to do that after you retire or even before you retire 
thanks a lot jiggy that brings us to the end of this conversation uh, in conversation with the first one in apac so thanks a lot for your time and thanks for all the interesting snippets that you shared with us again